greatest love story ever. There was one that said, um, they asked Jesus, how much do you love me? And he reached out his arms on that cross, on that stake. And he said, this much, greater love has no man than this. Oh, I love him. Mm. Hallelujah. Bless the mighty name of Jesus. Praise God. God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son in Proverbs 27 verse 9 Proverbs 27 verse 9 and I'm reading this from the amplified version oil and perfume make the heart glad oil and perfume make the heart glad so does the sweetness of a friend's counsel that comes from the heart. You know, this, this world can be a cold, hard, and lonely place. And as 17th century English poet and cleric John Donne profoundly wrote, no man is an island. If you have never had a dear friend that can give you good advice, encouragement, and, and in, in, in whom you can truly confide without having to worry about them blabbing or gossiping <laughs> out all of what you have confided in them, then the coldness and the hardness and loneliness of this world can be impractically can be practically impossible to bear. Proverbial wisdom likens that type of a friend to being like an oil and perfume that makes the heart glad because the sweetness of their counsel as an oil shows us that their wisdom that they impart into our lives is first spiritually grounded and therefore is as a perfume that can cause us to be able to bear the stench of life's disappointments and challenges. With all of that being understood, the question then arises, can a person of the opposite sex be that intimate and dear friend without there being any romantic involvement? You see, it's easy to answer that question with a yes. If the other person uh, in the relationship looks kind of like a charity case. <laughs> you know, where there's absolutely no beauty, no charm, no admirable personality or grace in the person. And of course, it's easy to say, oh, yes. But then... Are we only to look for these type of people of the opposite sex for friends? <laughs> platonic intimacy, it's a big word, platonic intimacy, is the title of my message this morning, and it's a timely topic, platonic intimacy. Today is Valentine's Day. For the merchants, that means the third. $15 billion dollar industry. For the romantic, that means a fuzzy wuzzy day of perfume and romantic dinners and candies and so on and so on. And of course, for the historians, it means a day when they feel they need to bring up the pagan roots of Valentine's Day, which dates it back to a fertility celebration known as the Luke for many single people that have no significant other in their life, this day cannot be over quick enough. <laughs> <laughs> now, while the roots of Valentine's Day can be traced to paganism, it can also be traced back to Catholic martyrdom, as there were many early Christian martyrs named Valentine, and the particular Valentine honored on February 14th was a priest in Rome 
who was martyred about AD 496 and was buried on the Via Flabina. The relics of St. Valentine were kept in the church and catacombs of San Valentino in Rome. That's the truthful history of Valentine's Day and, and other stories that have come along the way. But to me, love is a virtue that goes well beyond all of that. <laughs> We as a people so love to rush to declare days for things that should, that should really be year round. Uh, amen. Even there, though, though there is an official friendship day that comes around the end of July or the beginning of August. To me, what is more important to celebrate is the, the gift of love. Some people are in marital relationships and are not truly friends. <laughs> They're married, but they really don't like each other. <laughs> exactly, convenience. You see, true friendship is, to me, more important than romantic intimacy because youth must pass and age must take its toll. And if uh, what you have together is not built on a foundation of true friendship, then you really have nothing to hold you together, you two people, to joyously together. My focus this morning is platonic intimacy. This is a topic that is also very relevant to me because apart from my wife, who is my life partner, I too have a dear best friend that is of the opposite sex and who I have known from childhood. We met in seventh grade to be exact. This topic is also one that I dealt with as a single young man in my early 20s before I met Evelina. With another, not my best friend, this a girl, another beautiful lady that came into my life, but uh, she was a lady that God's destiny and purpose did not have for me to have a relationship with, so I had no romantic relationship with her. But I wrote a poem about it. Looking back, I see that the words were divinely inspired because the wisdom of these lyrics that I'm going to share with you, I believe can be a blessing to many people today. The name of the poem is Silent Vow. Silent Vow. The love that swells my chest must never be expressed. As on my fretted brow I know I, that I must take your hand hide the quivering of my lip and call you friend. I must deny myself, my every dream to love and hold you near. But fate has cursed and I in false pretense can never know that dream that grips my being. Platonic intimacy. You know, we go to the Bible and we see that Yeshua mastered the art of platonic intimacy. Mm -hmm. Platonic love is a strong type of love that is non-sexual. It has nothing to do with sex. The very first vitally important characteristic about a true friend of the opposite sex in platonic intimacy is that you can be alone with them without having to worry about them trying to fulfill a sexual agenda. And some people you can't be alone with. <laughs> you see, uh, what might be... Uh, uh, let me give you an example. Joseph, who the Bible tells us was a good-looking man and had a great body, which is a blessing from God. <laughs> but because of the jealousy and lust of other people, if we are blessed to be good looking and have a great body, it can become a curse. It can become more of a curse than a blessing. You see, the oil of divine favor may be over our life to the point where we get great promotion and trusted positions. But there will always be the haters. Haters can always be there. And those driven by a lustful demon that will make us feel like we have done something wrong. 
Some people going to be upset with you just because you look good. <laughs> so what are we supposed to do? Go around and look bad? And No. That's a blessing from God. But we have to always remember that our promotion and increase, it comes from God. And no matter what we may have to endure, we must have wisdom to not allow ourselves to be caught in a vulnerable position with people with hidden agendas. Plenty wolves dressed in sheep clothing out there. You know what's really sad? When the people that we cannot trust to be alone with are our own blood relatives. Like in the case with King David's eldest son, Amnon, who fell sick with lust for his half-sister. He need a good beating. <laughs> Tamar, and he plotted to be alone with her to rape her, which ended up with him losing his life because Absalom killed him to avenge the rape of his sister. You see, some sins will cost not only your reputation, but your life. Jesus was a perfect example. Jesus showed us that uh, he, you have to be trustworthy. Jesus showed us a great example of being trustworthy when being alone with the opposite sex. That's right. That's right. John chapter 4 verses 7 to 8. John chapter 4 verses 7 to 8. In this he chose to be alone because he had a purpose to fulfill. And it didn't have nothing to do with lust. It had to do with purity of heart and intentions. Somebody read John chapter 4 verses 7 to 8 for me. John chapter 4 verses 7 to 8. This, this gives us a great example of being trustworthy when being alone with the opposite sex. Amen? John chapter 4, 7 and 8. A Samaritan woman comes to draw water. Give me a drink, Yeshua tells her. For his disciples had gone away to the town to buy food. Jesus had sent his disciples on because he wasn't afraid to be alone. He didn't have a hidden agenda. Ladies and gentlemen, you got to be careful of people of the opposite sex that try to pass themselves off as friends, but they have a hidden agenda. Platonic intimacy is pure. It has nothing to do with sex. Amen? The next point is that we need to be perfectly clear with the other person that we're, we may be considering having a platonic relationship of intimacy with. We need to be perfectly clear why our relationship cannot, cannot proceed beyond specified boundaries. We need to be perfectly clear of this. Uh, you know, you gotta ask yourself some simple questions. Is this person already in a committed relationship? Because, you know, we come up with all sorts of fancy terms like significant other or, you know, when all sorts of fancy things, <laughs> what's the other one? Partner. Partner. All sorts of fancy words to hide the truth. You know, <laughs> and then sometimes a person in a situation where they need to be getting into a relationship because they may still be healing from the last relationship. And a broken person going into another relationship, they're going to repeat their errors because they ain't healed yet. And you need to make sure that that person really sees you in the light of being a friend. <laughs> so you got to take time with relationships. If you want to take the time to cement a friendship with you before even considering anything else. So you need to tell them, don't rush me. <laughs> don't be rushing me. 
Because friendship takes, and sometimes, I've been to this one. I wrote the poem about it. You have to make sure that this person, as wonderful as they may seem, this person has to be in God's will for you. Not every good thing is a God thing. <laughs> you may be heading down two different paths. And what ends up happening is you got two oxen pulling the opposite direction. Great oxes. But one pulling to the east and one pulling to the west. So you got to ask God, is this really uh, your will for me? And, and then there are some people, they got different values. They have different goals and different upbringing. And sometimes they are so drastically different. I love classical music. Supposing I had married to someone, I want that elevator music you're listening to. <laughs> I love fine dining because I'm, I'm only passing this way once. And supposing I had met someone that told me, oh, well, you know, McDonald's is just as good. <laughs> Different values. I want the best because I believe we're supposed to be blessed. Blessed in the city, blessed in the field. I, I don't honor God by being broke, busted, and disgusted. It may sound like great things to give us a testimony. It always gets my goat when people say, they get them and say, I'm broke, I'm busted, and disgusted, and God is good. And I'm saying, well, how come you broke, you busted, and disgusted, but... God is good, I must be missing something here. Some people, they got different values. They have different upbringing, <laughs> you know. <laughs> Proverbs 22 and 3. A prudent man foreseeth the evil. And what is he doing? The fool will rush to it. And hideth himself. But the simple, simple-minded, not just the wonderful simplicity. No, talking about a simple person. The simple pass on, they go straight past all the telltale signs that they should be going the opposite direction. And what happens? And are punished. Amen? Uh, the next point is are we being totally honest about our feelings? Are we being totally honest about our feelings? Hide the quivering of my lip and call you friend. Why that lip quivering? You're talking about friend, but got to be something else going down in your heart. <laughs> We're just friends. And they know oh, they got all them romantic dreams about y'all two running on the beach together. <laughs> that ain't no friend. That's a romantic interest. Yeah. Stop fooling yourself. There is no battle like the one we will fight with ourselves to deny a truth that we cannot accept. For platonic intimacy to work, we must be honest about our true intentions and how our feelings have grown to a stage beyond the perimeters of our definition. God saved me in that situation because the other party involved had romantic interests. But God gave me a dream as clear as day. It was almost like he was talking to me. He said, the best you could be with her is friends. And I told the sister, I said, I had a dream about you. She said, really, what? <laughs> and I said, God told me, because <laughs> I, I know she thought it was going someplace else. God told me the best we could be is friends. And she said, oh. <laughs> Frustration, disappointment, or heartbreak can be avoided <laughs> down the road if we do not fool ourselves. Amen? Amen. Psalm 51 and 6. Behold, thou desirest truth in the inward parts, and in the inward part thou shalt make me to know wisdom. Stop fooling yourself. The next point, we must not confuse the position and role that people should play in our lives. We must not confuse 
the position and role that people should play in our lives. There are some people that come in our lives that we are meant to have a mentor type relationship, like uh, to be a leader to them. 2 Timothy 1 and 11 says, Whereunto I am appointed a preacher and an apostle and a teacher of the Gentiles. It's like the patient falling in love with the doctor. You ain't supposed to be having a romantic relationship with people that you're supposed to be leading. You will not see pastor getting involved in a relationship with sheep. Because sheep are meant to be shepherded. Now, there are some other pastors out there, I call them wolves, that love to devour sheep. And it's wrong. They need to stop it. Stop being nasty. Yes, I said that. <laughs> Live right. Clean up your nasty act. Stop being a raper of sheep. I love you. <laughs> Nonetheless, you know, God will bless you if you clean up your mess. And then, you know, we're supposed to be a disciple and a mentee. And some people, we put them in the wrong position in relationships. Companionship means that you can walk together because you are agreed. Amen? And then people, familiarity will breed contempt and disappointment. I don't expect to be worshipped. Because you, you give God the glory and he'll give you the victory. I don't want nobody worshipping me. Because I got to find God just like you. I got to go on my knees and ask God, forgive me, Lord. Especially when I slip up on fast. Forgive me, Lord. <laughs> Dairy Queen called me and I went. <laughs> so I pastor, I gotta be on my knees too. Saying, God, I'm gonna do a I'm gonna it's gonna be a better day, God. It's gonna be a better day. <laughs> I had I slipped up just yesterday when I went to Wawa's and I ordered a large hot chocolate. And I squeezed that whipped cream on top of there till the thing wouldn't go no more. And all day I was telling my wife, my stomach feels so full. <laughs> Duh! <laughs> so don't be building me up, I ain't all of that. <laughs> I woke up this morning and I said, I'm not letting Wawa's fool me again. All night I was up run into the bathroom <laughs> so don't be don't be building me up <laughs> she asked me this morning you want coffee i said no ma'am <laughs> i put that man i that whipped cream was <laughs> like you know and i was there i was in sin sweet you know i was in happy land boy <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Next point. <laughs> Who we are as a person will determine how capable we are of being a quality friend. Who we are as a person will determine how capable we are of being a quality friend. Some people, they just corrupt by nature. Just in the natural. You know, they go to prison. Some of them, they sit up in prison and you say, boy, I know they're going to be changed when they come up. No, it's like they go to prison 101. <laughs> now, let's see what new tricks I could learn. Because their nature is so corrupt. Some people just have a crooked nature. Some people, they got a serious lust demon and they're talking about, well, this will just be friendship, you know. <laughs> <laughs> you know the person need deliverance they don't need relationship they need deliverance the history of our experiences play a major role in shaping the nature of ourselves. too often hurting and abused people hurt and abuse other people 
There are a lot of people that have been hurt out there and they've been abused and they go into relationships and their relationships are fractured and there's always problems because they have not resolved the first problems. Before we decide on allowing the intimacy of a friend, we need to first determine the true nature of their being. I don't care if they come dressed in Armani and, and have all the fancy, you know, wor wonderful words. Because some of these fellas, they could be pretty sweet. They have all the sweet words. They, when they talk, they sound like Lou Rawls. <laughs> well, how are you doing? You know, when you hear them talk, you think, you, you think you're listening to, to, you know, a jazz concert. Well, how are you doing? I mean, they, they walk it in in $1,500 shoes, and I mean, they just, you know, hey, you, you say, now, if that, in your flesh, you say, now, if that ain't God, no, <laughs> that ain't God, that ain't got nothing to do with God. <laughs> Who they are as a person, and person ain't got now, as a person, when you are, and I always tell people, don't mind women get being attracted to you because if you are reflecting the image of Christ and Christ was wise, he had wisdom, Christ had truth, he knew how to speak truth, Christ was uh, an encourager, he, 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 he had all the attributes that you'd look for in a mate. You get in trouble when you start saying, boy, she's really attracted to me. No, 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 fool, that ain't got nothing to do with you. The lady is seeing Christ in you. So do not get in the way of being a good light to somebody. Get your mind out of that. Who they are as a person will determine how capable they are of being a quality friend. Psalm 41 verse 9. Psalm 41, verse 9. Yea, mine own familiar friend, in whom I trusted, which did eat of my bread, hath lifted up his heel against me. You see, when you don't properly discern people that come into your lives, you put them in a position to do what they do best. Deceive you. I've never met a cute snake. I'm sorry. I, I know some people, they, they think snakes are so cute. That is just an absolutely adorable. Just look at that snake. Nope. The only relationship, and I know the animal rights people will be probably after me. The only relationship I need to have with a snake is me, the snake, and a shovel. <laughs> or, or run from the thing, right? <laughs> Or a nice 12 gauge. Just, I, I don't. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> a snake is a snake. It may be a weak snake, but when it gets strong, the nature. <laughs> That's right. This is going to be a two part message. But let's look at the key points here. One. Can we be trusted to be alone with that person? Some people you cannot be alone with. Point number two, we need to be perfectly clear as to why our relationship cannot proceed beyond specific boundaries. Make sure you set these boundaries now. You, you and your best friend don't need to be holding hands and walking on the beach. We're just friends. Because when that light flicker across that beach there and you, you just, you just do something to me. You do something me to me because you shouldn't be there on the beach with your best friend holding hands. Point number three. Uh, exactly. <laughs> if he had been out to war, he, he would not have been there. I always wondered about Bathsheba. She just happened to be conveniently bathing herself. Anyway. <laughs> mm -hmm. Are we being totally honest about our feelings? If you know you got romantic f 
feelings for the person, then, then that's it. it. It is what it is. This is not going to be a platonic relationship because at some point in the back of your mind, you're going to be just, I'm just waiting for this right opportunity. Let it go. Point number four. We must not confuse the position and role that people should play in our lives. Just the same way doctors shouldn't be dating patients, shepherds shouldn't, should avoid dating sheep. Point number five. I love you all. Don't get me wrong now. I love you all. Mwah, 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 mwah. <laughs> Point number five. Who we are as a person, because that's dealing with your nature will determine how capable we are of being a quality friend. Who we are as a person, not how well we dress or uh, how we can sound like Lou Rawls. Because <laughs> the devil got a deep voice, you know. The devil don't speak high. The devil doesn't say, no. No, that's Mickey Mouse. The devil speaks really low. <laughs> You check it out with some of these demonically possessed people. The devil speaks in a bass voice. <laughs> Who we are as a person <laughs> will determine how capable we are of being a quality friend. Amen? Deal with the nature, not the style. <laughs> Please, Dad.